Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Wars on Steam, The Force Unleashed. Eclipse to Starkiller. I'll be moving the rogue shadow out of firing range while you attempt your mission. The onboard scanner should be able to track your movements, and I will provide whatever intelligence support I can via your comlink. Captain Eclipse out. Alright, so now that we have Starkiller, aka Garen whatever his name is. We have actually a couple of new moves in our arsenal, although our force powers are severely, severely downgraded from when we were playing as Darth Vader. That will not be permanently the case. Eventually, we will be able to get a lot stronger. Now, whenever you reach doors like this door right by here, blast through them by uh, using your force push and, like I said, realistic destruction. It's so good, you know. Yeah. But as you can see, I'm a lot more agile than as I was when I was playing as Darth Vader. And we have a new ability which allows us to actually dash. If we press the LB button, you'll dash forward, and uh, it's quite useful actually. Now, one unique. One. Well, it's not really unique. All action games really have this move, but not many game. This game doesn't tell you how to use said move. Basically, if you hold down the RB button, you can actually lock on to enemies. Now, doing so will allow you to, def you know, dodge them and sort of weave in and out of combat. And I don't use it much at all in this playthrough. The only time you ever see me use it is on a specific boss fight. Because using it's only really useful on the boss fights now that I really think about it. Because fighting against these stormtroopers is pretty damn easy, to say the least. Now, like I said, you have a massive range of choices in terms of trying to kill these guys. You can either force push them, you can either slice them, you know, it's all down to you. The whole big thing about this game is being able to play the game the way that you want to. Now, from time to time, you're going to see these glowing thingies in the environment, like a red glowing thingy, which will be a temporary power-up that you can use. You know, basically, like a, it's like it's basically a Mario power-up, really. You just grab it, and suddenly, hey, you have infinite energy, or hey, you have... Temporary, temporary invulnerability, and then you have these white or yellowish glowy things, and these are Jedi holocrons. These are scattered throughout the entire level, but well, all the game, and collecting them will give you bonuses. Sometimes you get new lightsabers, which look neat, I guess. Sometimes you get different costumes, and sometimes you'll get orbs and stuff, which you can use to power up your attacks, so keep an eye out for them. They are quite tricky to find all of them. I'm going to spoil it right now, I don't find all of them in this playthrough, but the ones I do know are there, I do pick them up. Now what you're going to want to do in this door is just simply use your glorious force powers in order to push it up and down and all around. <laughs> ah, fun times. Now throughout the missions as well, you have uh, Juno Eclipse talking to you going ah oh, yeah you're doing this you need to do this thing to get by now for all six and poop well for more the most part I'll probably talk over her when she's talking in the levels because it's kind of really difficult for me to judge it's really difficult for me to know when she's about to talk you know unless I edit this beforehand and doing that but that would be too much effort <laughs> But one of the big problems with this game, on the PC version I have to say, is the fact the PC version isn't the greatest port in the world, because this is obviously a port of the console version of the game. Um, the game runs at 30 FPS, it's capped at 30 FPS, which for a lot of PC players, that is what I like to call not good, you know? Because uh, I, like, I buy PC versions of games to play them at full 60 FPS, you know, at full speed. But unfortunately, this is capped at 30. So it's not the best port in the world in that regard. And it has a lot of audio issues compared to the console version. Like, sometimes you play through the game and... Whee! <laughs> I love doing that. But sometimes you play through the game and the audio suddenly becomes year-achingly loud. Which you're not going to be hearing through this playthrough because I'm going to be managing the audio levels through the power of editing. But trust me, your ears will hate this game when you're uh, actually playing it yourself on the PC version. So a lot of people usually recommend getting the console version of the game. I still go for the PC version because I like the additional resolution because I can play this in 1080p on the PC. On the console, I cannot. So there's that. But yeah, I find it really strange when I find a game that's poorly optimized for the PC and then I play the sequel of said game, like Force Unleashed actually has a sequel. And um, it's really strange when the sequel runs 
a lot better than the original game, despite the fact it looks amazing in comparison. It's insane. But anyway, we just leveled up. Now, when you level up, you gain force combo spears. Basically, you gain spheres that you can spend on abilities. Like, by here, I'm going to upgrade my force push, so now I can charge it up and do more damage. And honestly, you're going to see this menu quite a bit, depending on how many... You know, it, this all really depends on you and how often you'll see this menu. If you're good at the game, well, you're gonna see, you're gonna see a lot of this menu. You're gonna be tr upgrading a lot of skills. What can I say? And by the time you reach the end of the game, if you're like me, you should have the majority of the skills unlocked. Not everything, but there is a new game plus. So if you want to unlock everything, the game gives you the option to. You know. Anyway, each of these um. Th on the force, basically the force talents, but you know, mainly things like health, stamina, damage, defense, you know, those kind of good buffs that you're gonna want throughout your adventure. Force upgrades is obviously your force powers. And um, combos, well, they are your combos, they're additional abilities that you can use to, well, inflict pain on the hordes of people. Uh. But yeah, I like the fact that you have to literally kill every single person you see on here, even though you're working for Darth Vader, because you're a secret. Honestly, I'm kind of thinking they did that on purpose purely because they didn't want to program enemies that don't attack you, you know? I, that's my theory on it. I don't really think LucasArts is that lazy a developer, mind you, but uh, I, that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, go out here and you're going to find a not-so-hit... Ah, he'll never find it behind these crates. You may never get it, because pushing the crates are always a bit of a nightmare, but there we go. Talent Spear hidden there. I don't know, I like it when, um... The game, they... Every now and then you see the game hiding these false spears behind obvious things, just... Like those crates, for example, just like, Haha, you'll never find it back here, watch now. And I find it every time, because it's a big glowing yellow thing, how could I miss it? Oh my god, the explosions. It's, a, it's enough to make bloody, um, Michael Bay blush. <laughs> of course, in this first level, on all the force powers we got, the only ones we actually have is force push and the grabby one that we're using right now. And one good thing about this game is actually the physics engine. Like I said before, all the things react like they should, really. Like, this bar opens up as it should. That box or clipped into the door, but who cares about that? <laughs> but one thing I find interesting is the AI, because whenever, whenever you're holding enemies with your force thingy, they have a chance to try and grab onto each other and grab onto things to be like, no, don't let me go. You know, they, in, it, I like it. It just adds a bit of character. But let's move on. Now, each level in this game, I'm going to say, is long. This is a very long game if you well it's, not, it's actually a short game it's to get the main story over and done with this 15 parts it's not that long game but each mission does take about half hour to complete give or take depending on what you know what you're doing now if you play the game like I did on my first playthrough oh, back in the day and oh my god you, you just be glad I'm not recording this on my first playthrough because this part this playthrough will probably be like something like 30 parts long <laughs> I used to get lost all the time. And I don't know why, because it's very obvious where to go. It's not exactly a complex game. Everything's linear. I don't know. But anyway, I wanted it to be epic and force push the lot of these with a charge hadouking, but unfortunately, the game's lock-on system decided to go, huh, you want to attack the tiny little dotty thing, do you? Well, bloody da Thank you, TIE Fighter. Huh. See, who says the Empire aren't helpful? <laughs> there we go, a charge blaster. Look how far they go, it's, oh, it's so delicious, I love it. <laughs> Seriously though, this game is, it's good fun. I, I, will, I will defend this game till the day I die. It has its problems, don't get me wrong. And the problems become more prevalent later on in the game, but it's still entertaining for what it is. It's hardly an awful game. It's not Bubsy 3D. It's not Superman 64. Two games I never want to experience again, by the way. <laughs> oh, and I think I was originally going to try and do a Bubsy 3D playthrough. 
I decided against it for I obvious reasons. Chatter, anyway, we're getting about to the halfway point of level, and this room is my favorite room in the entire stage for one reason. The glass! Oh, so much glass in the area that we can shatter. Oh. See, just give me things to destroy, and I'm a happy gamer, you know? Look at that. Look, destruction. It's delicious. Oh, oh, oh. But yeah, some of the moves that we lost when we just when we stopped playing the Darth Vader was the, the lightsaber throw. We can't throw our lightsaber at these guys anymore, which is much to my chagrin. Not chagrin. What's the opposite of grin? To my shizad. Shizad? Shizad? I was sad, basically, to find out you can't use that right away, which, you know. But don't worry. Just destroy it. I had an urge. I had to destroy all these glass windows. I, I, it's, it's something, you know. I, maybe it's because the Windows OS has been giving me hassle. I don't know. <laughs> I just like to see the thing shatter, you know. Anyway, right by here, we're going to find an interesting mechanic that applies to basically any space level of the game. See that? Well... I say right by here, but we saw it earlier on, and I don't know if I actually make use of it in this particular place. But see those windows in the background? I do make use of it. Basically, if you smash the window, it will suck out all enemies and objects in the vicinity. It doesn't suck you out, so don't worry, you can't die by getting sucked out the window into the vacuum of space, because I guess the force keeps you grounded, and I don't know. I like that because, it, it again, it adds an interesting new way to be able to take out enemies. You, you don't need to play this game the same way I do, folks. This game is what, truly a play-it-your-own-way sort of deal. Like, I like to spam force push every chance I get and hope that someone gets pushed into things, you know? You don't need to play that way. That's one of the big things that I like. It's truly a game where you can play your own. You can either be up and at them at front, or you could be at a mile away throwing people at other people and into things like this force barrier which to disable you just pull the plug out it's quite easy enough really I don't know it's such a good time you know but one of the things that I always like personally whenever I play the game I like to have a mix of going close up and far away because sticking to one particular style is, is quite boring to watch you know and be gone my fiends I actually cut that by accident but hey at least they got sucked to the vacuum of space and I am the victor <laughs> yet again yes join the dark side you fools now you guys might be wondering how exactly does this um, game tie in to the later star you know into Star Wars episode 4 5 6 which technically is the earlier Star Wars movies, not the later, but it bits later on in the timeline, so but, well, that's beside the point. Well, I'm not going to spoil it, because it's actually a pretty big deal. And, simply put, without the events in this game happening, Episode 4 wouldn't have happened. Well, that was until Disney decided to go and turn around and recon everything, so all these extended universe stuff like this game is no longer canon. Which, by the way, Disney, that's a dick move. <laughs> We all know Kyle Katarn from Dark Forces should be the best Star Wars character ever. Considering he's literally Chuck Norris if he knew the Force. True story. We'll, see, we'll probably see Kyle Katarn in a later playthrough of, um, a star, of the Star Wars games, you know? But anyway, folks, that is it for this part. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish, people. And when we return next time, we'll continue and clear up the rest of the first level of the game. Thanks for watching, I'll see you after. Bye!